Hello everyone and welcome to another Stat 437 lecture video. In today's video we are going to be talking about the proportional hazards models in our first survival analysis. All right, so in the previous lectures we were looking accelerated at accelerated failure time models and these are quite popular models for fitting continuous uh, time longitudinal or survival models. Proportional hazard models are probably slightly more commonly used uh, they certainly, I think, predate uh, accelerated failure time models. And they're this really natural idea, but they're not so uh, connected to the location scale formulation that we were using before. Instead, the idea with a proportional hazards model is that we're going to start from trying to model the hazards function itself. And uh, doing this, there's sort of a natural way of doing it. And the reason that we like that is because that's really tightly connected to the likelihood ratio or the likelihood that we talked about before, right? And so if we can sort of directly model the hazards function, well, then we can sort of get a likelihood inference very naturally from there, right? So that's the idea with these proportional hazards models. They're the last type of model that we're gonna be looking at in this course. And so uh, in this video, I'll present conceptually high level, go over everything. In the next video, we'll talk a little bit about sort of some of the theory with it. And then in the final video, we'll actually fit some of these models in R. And that's sort of where the course is going to end, uh, at least in terms of the content that we'll be covering. Hopefully that gives you some time at the end of the semester to work on your final projects and uh, sort of get those submitted. So as always, slides are posted on the course website. If you have any questions at all at any point, do let me know. Uh, but with that, we can actually start talking about proportional hazards models. So the proportional hazard model, what is it? Well, as I was briefly mentioning, uh, instead of thinking about it as a model for Y, which is what we were doing with these accelerated failure time models, the idea is what if we model the hazard function directly? And this is sort of an intuitive thing to think about doing because the hazard function is so tightly integrated into the likelihood, right? We saw that we can actually write it, uh, the likelihood itself, as a product of the survivor function and of the hazard. But the survivor function can be sort of re-expressed in terms of the hazard itself, right? By taking the exponential of the integral of it. And so because of that, the likelihood can be done totally in terms of the hazard functions, which makes it a natural candidate for trying to specify some sort of model for, right? So that's the basic idea. And um, so if, if you think about, for instance, the hazard uh, function, we had sort of modeled it directly using those proportional odds models back in the discrete time setting. But if we think about fitting a similar type of model here, right, where we take the log of the hazard to be given by some sort of linear predictor, then what we would find is that the hazard itself is given by some sort of exponential uh, with the intercept coefficient there times by this exponential uh, where xi beta. So a point I'll make right now is that uh, in this lecture, when we're talking about xi, we're going to assume that there's no intercept in that. So that will be emphasized again, but just, you know, this notation makes it clear that we're sort of taking, uh, we can write out the hazard if we're thinking about it in terms of a log linear regression here. We can write out the hazard as a product of this sort of baseline and then times by uh, this term that includes any of the covariates that we care about. Now, if we were to do that model directly, then what we're sort of specifying is that we have this baseline term that is a constant hazard, right? And then every individual sort of deviates from that constant hazard. But we saw that a constant hazard refers to an exponential distribution, right? And so what we're sort of saying there is that at the baseline, we have this hazard function, which represents some sort of exponential distribution. And then every individual based on their covariates, uh, they sort of deviate from that, right? An individual who has an X of zero in this case is just going to be left with this baseline X uh, beta zero, right? And so what we're saying is that at the baseline, if you don't have any covariate value, you'd have an exponential um, hazard function here. And then we're sort of scaling multiplicatively based off of the coefficients. So the core concept of the proportional hazards uh, model is to sort of take the motivation that we have there and then say, but what if we just replaced that uh, e to the beta zero with some baseline hazard function, right? We can replace it with any hazard function. And then what we would have is we'd have this model where you start with some hazard function, right? And that's gonna be the hazard function when x equals zero. 
and then from there you multiply it by e to the power of that linear predictor right and so we're scaling up and down the hazard function based on the covariates right in the accelerated failure times we were scaling up and down the uh, survival time based on the covariates and here we're working directly against the hazard function okay so formally speaking what is this well we say that a model is a proportional hazards model if we are specifying a model for a hazard function and it takes this form where we have h0t h0t being uh, sort of the baseline hazard right where it could be uh, sort of any parametric family that we uh, care about and then we multiply that by e to xi transpose beta now again remember there is no intercept here so this is purely a uh, a linear predictor with covariates and so h0t then represents uh, the hazard function when xi equals zero. So it's our baseline in the sense of if your covariates are zero, that's going to be your hazard, right? Because then this e to the zero term becomes a one and we're just left with h zero. And so the reason that we can't have any intercept is because then that, that would sort of interfere with our baseline there, right? And so um, we're thinking about this as sort of a very general form. And then uh, intuitively, the model is really going to be driven by what we select for that baseline hazard, right? If we select an exponential, we've already seen sort of what we're getting. It's going to be a constant here multiplied by uh, some sort of uh, other, other term that we have going on here. But we could plug in anything. We could plug in a Weibull distribution. We could plug in a uh, log normal. Whatever the case may be, we can uh, plug that in there, right? So how do we interpret this model and how do we go about fitting the parameters? Well, in terms of the interpretation, there's this really uh, neat idea of using hazard ratios, right? And so if you imagine two individuals, one of them is individual I, the other one is I prime. And let's say that they're exactly the same, except for uh, XIJ uh, versus XIJ prime. Okay. So um, for individual I, that takes on the value of X plus one for their Jth component of the covariate vector. And, uh, uh, for individual um, i prime, it's just going to take on some value x, right? So we have xij is x plus 1, xi prime j is x. And otherwise, they're the exact same person. Well, if we take this ratio, right, they have the same baseline hazard, so those will cancel out in the ratio. They also have the same uh, linear predictor except for at beta j, right? And so then if at the uh, beta j is just going to be left because it, everything else will sort of cancel it. So we say that their hazard ratio will simplify down to this exponential of beta j. Now, the same thing would have happened had this been a categorical factor, right? And, and we would have taken uh, xij1 versus 0, right? The exact same simplification would have happened. And so this sort of gives us the, the mechanism through which we can interpret the coefficients. And it also tells us why we call it a proportional hazards model, right? Because the hazard of uh, these two individuals who differ just based on one uh, covariate are proportional. They will always equal the same sort of constant. This is similar to what we saw with the proportional odds models, where we would have the odds as being uh, sort of always equal to a, uh, a constant multiple, but here it's the hazard functions directly, right? And so you can start thinking about the coefficients where if you exponentiate them, well, that's giving you some sort of hazard ratio that you can interpret. And then we can think about that as scaling up or down the probability of instantaneous uh, failure, right? Or the density of that, I suppose. So in terms of the likelihood, I had already mentioned before that our likelihood expression can be written entirely with regards to the hazard function. So in particular, if you take a look at the likelihood expression that we had been using before, we can write, uh, I guess in this case, the log likelihood, but the same thing goes as equal to the sum over all individuals. Uh, you take delta i, multiply by the log of our hazard, and then you subtract off this cumulative hazard function or the integral of the hazard. Right? And so if you've specified a fully parametric model for HI, we've fully parameterized the log likelihood, and we can just use likelihood techniques in order to solve for the relevant parameters. So that's essentially the idea of how we're going to go about uh, fitting these models, right? And so you plug in any parametric uh, baseline hazard, you plug in the variates that you care about, and then we can fit this model and we're going to get sort of this likelihood understanding out of it. All right. Now, one of the things that's sort of limiting about these models is that you do have to specify a parametric form for the baseline hazard. 
And it's not always going to be obvious what that baseline should be. And so because of this, one of the ways that we can get around doing this, or at least add a little bit more flexibility to the model, is by using a weekly parametric form for that. So the basic idea is that instead of using one baseline hazard, we use a piecewise baseline hazard. And so if we take sort of uh, the real line and we cut it up into k different components, right? So we're making cuts at a0, a1, up to ak, right? And we can choose what those cuts are. Then what we could say is perhaps on each of these intervals, so from a0 to a1, from a1 to a2, and so on, there's a constant hazard, at least at the baseline, right? And so then we would specify for each of those intervals, the baseline is going to be given by just some constant h0, k, right? And what this is basically saying is that on each sort of time period interval, we are uh, taking it to be some sort of constant hazard, some sort of exponential hazard, right? And then we allow that diff distribution to differ based on where those cuts are. Okay, and this is essentially what we're using in terms of the discrete time model, right? If you think about it, we had sort of discretized time. We put uh, each of those coefficients into the, or each of those variates into the model. Uh, they each got their own coefficient, which let us estimate a hazard, a constant hazard in each time interval. And then we let the, um, uh, the plus x transpose beta off the end of that. And that's effectively what we're doing here as well, just in a slightly different format, right? And so um, we can sort of see this as a weekly parametric version of this, where yes, we're still making some parametric assumptions, but uh, as you add more and more cuts, it becomes more and more flexible for the distribution. Okay, so with that, we sort of have the whole idea of proportional hazards models out of the way, right? We have a baseline hazard, we specify a linear predictor, can't be any intercept in that. And then we just essentially say the hazard is equal to the baseline hazard times by e to the power of that linear predictor. And then we can fit this with uh, maximum likelihood expressions that's gonna be implemented for us in R. So that makes everything really nice. Now, the one thing that you might be wondering, and if not, then you know, wonder for, uh, for, for the sake of sort of curiosity right now is, how do accelerated failure time models and proportional hazard models relate to one another? And the basic answer is that they're completely incompatible, right? A proportional hazard model, if it is the true model, is in general not expressible as a, an accelerated failure time model and vice versa. The one exception to that is through the use of Weibull regression. So if you specify your baseline hazard to be a Weibull distribution, a Weibull hazard function, then what you would find is that this is also expressible as an accelerated failure time model. And so what this means is that when we're using that Weibull distribution, you can interpret the parameters either as the parameters from an accelerated failure time distribution or an accelerated failure time model or from a proportional hazards model. So to emphasize what I mean here, uh, what we're doing is we're taking H0 to be the Weibull hazard function And what's going to end up happening, and we'll show this in the next lecture in a little bit more detail, but if beta are the coefficients for the proportional hazards model, right? So we have a Weibull baseline times by e to the beta or x transpose beta, then we could fit a model, an accelerated failure time model, where beta star are the same coefficients, or not the same coefficients, but the coefficients on the same covariates. And what we're going to find is that we have this nice relationship where beta star so the parameters from the accelerated failure time model are equal to negative beta divided by kappa. And kappa is the parameter of the Weibull distribution that we're working from, right? And so we can sort of move between either interpreting the parameters uh, from the proportional hazards model, right? So these beta parameters from the proportional hazards model, or by doing this sort of rescaling of them, we can interpret them from the interpretation of the accelerated failure time model. So this is a special case. This is the only case that is like this. And um, it sort of is quite useful because there are times where the AFT model might sort of have a nicer interpretation or where the proportional hazards model might have a nicer interpretation. And if you're using a Weibull distribution, well, then you can uh, sort of interchange between the two of them. And that's part of the reason why people like the Weibull distribution so much for survival analysis. But we'll see how we get this relationship there. But just know that in general, the proportional hazards and accelerated failure time models can't be used on the same data. But when it's the case of a Weibull distribution, if it fits, then you can interpret it in either way. Okay.
So in summary, <coughs> proportional hazards models specify a uh, direct form for the hazard function uh, using some sort of parametric baseline hazard function. And then they scale that baseline hazard multiplicatively based on sort of the covariates of interest. We can use a weakly parametric baseline hazard model instead of using an explicitly parametric baseline hazard model. That gives us some added flexibility. There's sort of that connection to uh, the discrete time case when we do that. The proportional hazard models can then be fit using maximum likelihood estimation by just simply noting that the likelihood can be expressed uh, solely in terms of the hazard function. And so if we do that, then we can just use maximum likelihood estimation, get out estimates for what these uh, parameters would be, and uh, sort of go from there using all of our likelihood theory that we know and love. Now, pH and AFT models are generally incompatible with one another. If one of them is true, the other one won't be. There's not a corresponding AFT model. However, if you're using a Weibull baseline hazard, then in that specific setting, you can interpret the parameters under either uh, the interpretation of proportional hazards or accelerated failure time models. Okay, And so that's essentially everything for proportional hazards models, at least conceptually. Right? So hopefully it's, it's sort of straightforward. We specify this really nice form for our hazard function. And then from there, we can just use likelihood. Okay, And that's, that's sort of uh, where it boils down to. The reason that we like to use this form specifically is because there's this nice interpretation of the coefficients, which allow us to scale up or down the hazard based on what values of the covariates we have. You can see that using those hazard ratios directly. So with that, we're sort of done this uh, conceptual discussion. In the next lecture, we'll talk through uh, sort of the technical details of this, and then we'll go into R and we'll actually fit some of these models. And hopefully that gives you all of the tools you need to sort of do all of the coursework in this course. As always, if there's any questions you have at all, please feel free to reach out and ask me. And otherwise, I will see you all in the next lecture.